How many of you have seen these before? These long-bodied wasps. I remember sometimes I would see one just fly by and I would be like, what the heck was that? Well, this year, a lot of them stuck around my mint plants and I got a good look at them. Let's check them out. The Thread-Wasted Wasp. All throughout the summer, my mint plants have attracted all kinds of visitors. One of which was the Green Link Spider we did a video on. After my mint plants started flowering, I noticed an influx of even more wasps visiting. We had all kinds. The great black wasps, mason wasps, potter wasps. They were very busy, constantly, always up to something. Many of these wasps nest in pre-existing cavities, or they dig simple burrows in the soil. Some species even construct freestanding nests of mud. The vast majority also practice mass provisioning. It's where they stockpile all the food for each of their offspring in a small chamber before laying their eggs. In predatory wasps such as these, who are also pollinators, the food is typically in the form of paralyzed or dead prey. After digging a nest, they quickly catch one or a few prey items, bring them back to the nest, and then lay eggs on them. They seal the nest back up and leave and never return. The mother carefully arranges dirt and stones and small twigs to disguise the entry of the nest, keeping it safe from other insects from robbing her catch or making a meal of her young. Some practice delayed provisioning where they bring back prey after the egg is hatched, while others practice genuine progressive provisioning where they reopen the nest and add more prey as the larva grows. Stored provisions also include masses of mixed pollen and nectar, and some species even store floral oils. It seems to be common to see them flying in tandem. Well, when they're preparing to mate, they stay with their partner. Part of their mating behavior includes prolonged coupling. As you see a couple here going blissfully from plant to plant, with the male gently grasping his mate by the neck as she saunters from blossom to blossom. Capturing grasshoppers, crickets, caterpillars, and other bugs requires a lot of energy. So we're watching on here as the female is ignoring her piggybacking mate while she fuels up on carbohydrate-rich nectar and when not feeding on flowers, they're seeking food for their young. The female wasp will wrestle with the prey and deliver a paralyzing sting. The immobilized victim is then transported back to their subterranean nursery. I've always thought these were cool looking wasps with their long skinny abdomen. Now, according to some experts, the advantage is it enables them to more easily maneuver their body into position to lay eggs and to also sting would-be predators. They definitely tend to prefer plants with white and yellow blooms that are not funnel shaped. Blossoms with nectar that's easy to reach. They like Queen Anne's lace, asters, mint especially, and goldenrod. There are more than 125 species of thread-wasted wasps in North America that even entomologists find them difficult to distinguish from one another.
So that leaves me wondering what are some of the color patterns of the ones that you've been seeing in your area. So let me know and from where you're from. Thanks. And thanks for watching. Till next time.